Hello and welcome to season four of Baltimore Pioneers, coming to you from the historic Parkway Theater in Baltimore. On this show, we will talk with compelling thinkers and doers in Baltimore. I'm Xavier Plater. Thanks for tuning in to this student-produced show. Our guest for this episode is Reed B. Moore, a local community street artist who specializes in wire sculptures and skateboard design. His phenomenal artwork is displayed all throughout the Baltimore community and recently the D.C. Botanical Garden. His artwork has real meaning, resonates with the community, and we are excited to have him on the show. So how are you, Reed? What's good? It's good to see you, man. Good to see you. Um, so let's get into who, who is Reed Baltimore and how was he originated? Um, well, I mean, I just started liking graffiti and color. Uh, mm -hmm. Honestly, I was just kind of like a little bit of a trouble kid. My dad like worked a lot and he was like a single parent, so like I had a lot of time in my hands to go out and do artistic things. and. Okay. You know, that soon turned into graffiti, and then graffiti turned into, like, street art. And okay. Yeah, now I'm here in the city providing, so All right. it's so good to be here. The name Reed B. Moore, like, B. Moore, where did that name come from? Well, just from Baltimore. Uh, this is, like where, like, where my artwork's from. Like, I've been in Maryland for almost 20 years, you know? Okay. And uh, it's just one of those things that if I travel to a city, like, I want to bring my city with me wherever I do with my artwork. So really? That's, that's interesting. That's where that comes from. Okay. You know, got to right. represent. So um, what does this inspiration come from when it comes to you and your art and your creativity? Uh, honestly, it's just kind of on the fly. Any creative knows that like, if you kind of plan for something, you're just gonna, you're gonna fall down a little bit. But yeah. you know, if, if you just have it come from somewhere organic and somewhere truthful and you know, be humble about like, your process, uh, thing, a lot of things will just come out and you won't even plan for it. You know? mm -hmm. So a lot of the creative stuff comes from just Walking around Baltimore and just uh, enjoying the weather. I mean, right now yeah. we're enjoying like 70 degree weather yeah, when like, no, last week so. it was snowing. So uh -huh. I mean, definitely some good inspiration. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I I did recently research that um, you've learned you know your wire sculptures from I think it was out of cereal boxes or something like that. Was it something? No, was it was it? like um, so like I originally got into wire sculpture because I I would always go to like my local grocery store and grab mm -hmm. like one of those like fruit ties ah, gotcha, and I would just gotcha. take a bunch of them home and just start messing around with them and you know start making little figures and I guess it kind of graduated to that okay so yeah all right so um, I did see also like um, some people were questioning you about how do you get your sculptures hung up on the street lines and everything mm -hmm. and you know I just thought that you know it, it's dead center in the center of the street you know so how do you get those sculptures up there like that uh, it was a lot of design work on my end. So it's a lot mm -hmm. of street art in terms of the expression, but the design work really goes into how I fixate my like sculptures on the, okay. you know, the street line or the random wire that goes across. I used to throw them over, but now I just really? kind of place them with like a very long pole. So yeah. I'm just going around the city at four o'clock in the morning, just trying to put stuff up in places where it's going to be wait, in your four face. Four o'clock in the morning? Yeah, or it, it honestly, it, it depends. Honestly, okay. I'll be like, it'll be four o'clock in the morning in like the center of the city or if I'm like somewhere out uh, like in Sandtown or something or yeah, like yeah, over yeah. on like East Baltimore, uh -huh. like they don't really care. As long as I'm providing for the community, people are pretty with it, you know? Yeah, so how, how consistent are you with, you know, hanging them up? Like, I, I'll, I'll break, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably one of the most important parts about being an artist is you don't have to burn yourself out too hard. Uh, I, got you. I have so many creative outlets. I mean, as probably you do as well, mm -hmm. like music. And it's just like, whenever you try to kind of, you know, reassociate yourself with like a different medium, it's a lot easier if you just kind of keep it loosey goosey and not really, you know, try to fortify your own practice with just yeah. a single thing. Got yeah. you. So when you're going in certain communities, like, and you're, you know, you're kind of caught hanging, ha you are probably caught hanging it up. Like, yeah. do you get anybody like that, you know, set that shout out, you know, what are you doing? Or, you know, you don't belong here or this, you know, how, how do you, how do the community, the, the residents like react to your art? It's, it's, it's a little mix. I mean, some people are get confused, but as soon as they figure out what I'm doing, mm -hmm. I'm, they're usually really happy. I mean, I think like the only time that I've really had like there's been like a few times, but, like the only time that I've really had like a big flag was uh, when I was hanging it up during the uprisings, and okay. uh, I was doing it down in the Inner Harbor, and that's when the National Guard told me, like, ran up on me and told me to like stop doing what I was doing. Really? I was doing it in like the broad day, 
late, so I wasn't uh, trying to be okay. too inconspicuous. But mm -hmm. so I mean, that's really the only thing, like trouble with authority. Okay, but so you hung it up like right in their face, like right yeah, there. yeah. It's kind of like a statement, but I mean, they didn't do anything. Uh huh. They just told me to like scurry it along, and then I just went two blocks away to the city hall and hung it right in front of city hall. So yeah, I did see that picture. I seen it right there. And I think he was like, um, I hope the mayor see this. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it was something like that between those lines. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was on one of those peaceful uh, protests because you do u utilize that when it comes to, you know, um, you know, sharing that positive thing, you know, light and all that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That's that's interesting, man. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So we're going to take a quick break from our conversation with Reed B. Moore. We'll be right back. 3D printers, motion capture technology, modern medical tools, engineering and architectural software, commercial kitchens, professional video cameras and editing software, laser printers, dental suites, cutting edge technology, state of the art facilities and the most current training and tools. These are the classrooms where Baltimore City Public Schools students learn every day. This is career and technology education. Did you know that students who have a regular diet of nutritious foods are healthier, have more energy, and do better in school? That's why City Schools is increasing its healthy and fresh food options for every meal served during the school day. I love that they have my favorite vegetables and fruits. By eating healthy, I'm going to get more smart. If you don't be healthy, you're going to get sick. Students who eat well, do well. So be sure to choose healthy options to keep your body energized and your mind focused and ready to learn. Welcome back to Baltimore Pioneers, coming to you from the historic Parkway Theater in Baltimore. I'm Xavier Plater, here with Reed B. Moore, a local street artist discussing about the interesting art sculptures around the city. So Reed, um, you were hanging up uh, sculptures back in when uh, the riots and everything were happening. Yeah. Um, compare that to today's life when you hang up sculptures now. And how is that like and how different is it? Well, I think what it is is like a lot of my sculptures, I'm trying to bring light to certain situations. Mm -hmm. um, as like it was an after effect method of installing my sculptures, like, you know, in support of the city as much as it was trying to bring light to a certain situation. Like right now, mm -hmm. everything's kind of like, died down and uh, providing for the city of art has been at the most crucial moment to really say like what you really want the people to like understand mm -hmm. and um, I, I think that probably like the difference in like then and now is like there's r immediate push for like change mm -hmm. and we're right on the cusp of doing that right. um, where more so that wasn't even a conversation back in the day and now that it's in the forefront of everybody's minds who live in the city uh, I think it's our job as artists to really kind of um, comment mm. on things that are happening, to right. bring light. Otherwise, okay. people aren't really going to listen, you know? Right. When it comes to art, you know, every artist has their own, like, you know, uh, capability and certain things that, you know, they do, they may do in the art, many people won't understand. Do you think that, you know, your message is being, like, you know, is getting across when it comes to you putting your art different places? Uh, I think... The one message that I've always wanted to strive for is just rediscovery and just being happy now. You know, mm -hmm. just being happy. Uh, when you're a kid, like having something new in front of you, like that, the understanding of something that was very ob unobtainable but kind of mystical at the same time mm -hmm. is what I kind of want to bring to light. Although, like, I, I could put up anything, anybody's just going to take it as their own will, as like a mirror of their own self. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what I'm trying to do is just have that question be asked in the first place, mm -hmm. you know, uh, through the environment and through artwork. Right. So. Got you. So I noticed that, you know, most of your arts are displayed around, you know, in the city, but within the streets. What's so significant about the street? Um, well, it goes back to, like, my roots as a graffiti artist, for mm -hmm. one thing. Um, the, the commitment to try to stay up and, like, stay relevant is always, like, something that I have to, like, strive for, mm -hmm. even though, again, that's kind of contradictory to not burning yourself up. It's a very steady balance of doing both. But mm -hmm. honestly, like, when I started hanging up my sculptures, the reason why I did it was kind of, like, almost as, like, a troll uh, because I'm hanging it up on wires in the city of wire yeah, and yeah, 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 in yeah. your uh -huh, face uh -huh. where 
technically, if you don't look at my sculptures, you're kind of like not following the basic traffic rule of like looking at the light in the first place. Gotcha. You, know, you see people all the time like on their phones, so just to give someone like a reason, almost like look up and see if something was there, or not yeah. there, like at a time, is completely uh -huh. up to them, and I feel like that's what gives power to. My yeah, pieces. Yeah, yeah. So I've noticed that um, some of your pieces have been even hung up right on Charles Street, yeah. um, but I don't see it anymore. So what happens to it for a certain period of time? But does someone take them down or? Yeah, city or sometimes just bad design. Uh, like through the years, I've been like trying to evolve like the creation of clamping systems and how to mm -hmm. hang them up on certain environments and poles. And it's always just like a learning. Uh, it's always just a lesson, like every single time I'm really? going into a different sculpture. Uh, um, but actually the one that used to be uh, hanging up here, uh, one of my friends who are biking, and now mm -hmm. one of my friends who's biking, um, I ran over it one time when the wind blew it down, so now she has it up in her living yeah, room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is one of these sculptures, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. can you, you know, give, give us a rundown about this? Like, what is it? Like, um, I can't, I, it looks like, um, the, sure are these could, the ears right I'm here? I'm sure if you can kind of see like, it. A, it's a butterfly. Ah, I knew, a, I knew it was something cocoon, wings. And I made the, uh, is that a, you said cocoon? Yeah, in a cocoon, and okay. I made that out of, um, a that photo is. that I did of abandoned row houses. Really? So if you turn your head sideways, it kind of, Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. At first I thought it was like a ladybug or something because I've seen the ears and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. No, it's definitely yeah, a bug. So, definitely a bug. So you, you, you like look at maybe a visual or something and then you just like copy it or mimic it and just put it into wire. Yeah, yeah. I just like kind of um, ideas I Photoshop in my head, yeah. uh, just trying to do overlaying concepts. Wow. Uh, this one I've done kind of based off of like classical renditions of mm -hmm. uh, floral butterfly prints. Got they would you. introduce that into paintings as like a mimicry of revitalization and death and like really? rebirth. Ah. So I kind of wanted to bring that imagery into like my artwork for yeah. more of my gallery standings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely have a big following on Instagram. Everyone's loving yeah. your, your artwork and everything, loving what you do, you know, with, even with the skateboards here. Thank you. Um, and I'm, of course, loving it as well. Appreciate it, Zach. I'm, you know, you're pretty talented, of course. Thank you. Um, so what, what happens when, of course, when they take it down, like do you have like maybe like a storage pile that you, you know, you stack all of the the f used ones up, or do you even probably when you get them back, like do you put them back up? Like what happens? Man, I've, to what? I've never gotten one back, honestly. But mm -hmm. what I've heard from uh, interviewing some of the city workers, like apparently there's a bunch of like my sculptures just hanging in some random office somewhere. Really? So <laughs> they must be loving uh, If anybody from the office uh, gets this, uh, please give me my sculptures back. <laughs> the city misses them. I miss them. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, please, please, please give him the sculptures back. <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. You can keep them. I'll just make more. <laughs> okay, let's take another quick break and come back as we dive deeper into what motivates Reed B. Moore with doing what he does for the Baltimore community. Stay tuned. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between your experience in city schools and your experience in college? I think that the main difference is how people act. So in Baltimore City, we have sort of like this way of kidding with each other, whereas not, that's not really like the, the social norm out with the, some of the county kids at UMBC, and so they'll take it some, kind of seriously at times. It's, it's just it's like sort of different cultural aspects. I am a Baltimore City Public School student. I am a lot of my Baltimore City Public School. Je suis de Baltimore City. Salut, je suis une élève de Baltimore City Public School. Je suis une étudiante de Baltimore City Public School. Je suis une étudiante de Baltimore City Public School. We are Baltimore City Public School students. And we celebrate diversity every day. Welcome back to Baltimore Pioneers. I'm Xavier Plater here with Reed B. Moore, an amazing street artist who lives for the city of Baltimore. Thanks for tuning in. So Reed, um, you skate, man. Yeah. Can you tell me why are you so passionate about it? It's just a way of expressing myself again mm -hmm. uh, through, you know, through the environment. Often, yeah. like my wire sculptures. Um, it's just one of those things that, like, when you have something uh, ulterior, you know, something alternate to like walking, mm -hmm. uh, you really experience, uh, you know, everyday life in a completely different sense. Yeah. You know, like uh, from my house all the way over here, I can mm -hmm. just memorize every single crack that's, you know, that could get in my way and like, or could help or uh, hurt me. Mm -hmm. And um, it's that distinction between like knowing like what to really pay attention to is something uh, that I really admire about skateboarding. Got yeah. you. So when you're rolling down, I'd say maybe North Avenue, a, a place in the city, um, I know you 
obviously get a lot of people staring at you, you know, yeah. probably saying certain things, maybe do a kickflip or, or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> talk to me about, you know, how do you feel skating through the city of Baltimore? It's, a, it's positivity, you know? I mean, like the fact that someone would come up to me and say, like, do a kickflip or do something that they're interested mm -hmm. in what I'm doing in the first place is something I, you know, don't love, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some people take it as negativity, but honestly, like, if you just look at, like, where you are, you're such an privileged place to not, mm -hmm. like, take five minutes to get somewhere to, like, walk, and it takes 30 seconds, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, I, I think it's just, like, the com miscommunication between, uh, you know, the separation of gotcha. how people see the sport yeah. and how I experience it and mm -hmm. just taking every little bit to kind of get people interested is like just what it is. Got you, got you. So I see in, in, in these boards that you have that they have these significant designs. They're, yeah. they're amazing, man. How, do, do you craft these yourself? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. Oh my we God. Do, we do R&D, so a lot of the board production goes like out in the U.S., but we do like the designs and like the shape and the building process, uh -huh. like right here in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, really? And I, I use like sacred geometry as just kind of like an all-over text, uh, just to show a good contrast between like gold and black. Wow. And so it's sacred geometry is that's the name of your brand? Yeah. Well, I mean that's just like the series, like the design series that ah, I kind of put it under. Got you. And got I, you. I, I label them. Um, just so I don't lose track and, wow. you know. So, so you don't just only skate, but you design skateboards. Yeah, like you actually, I skate and I design skateboards as my nine to five. Wow, so is there a, a place that we could go to pick up one yeah. of these skateboards? Um, so I work over at City Garage okay. uh, at Bustin Skateboards. Mm -hmm. um, they were originally from Hagerstown. They're a Maryland company, but moved to Brooklyn for the branding okay. and just recently moved back because now we have like a warehouse space and a yeah. small skate park and. Uh -huh. You know, everything that we would need to kind of um, move our R&D department a little forward. Right, right. I researched a little bit how skateboarding is like a, a cope mechanism that keep, you know, young adults and just people in general oh, yeah. out of trouble. Um, yeah. Do you personally think that, you know, skateboarding is that mechanism that keeps you out of trouble, maybe? It used to. It definitely yeah. used to. Mm -hmm. um, well, but what it did is expanded my bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, when we went back to, like, how fast it was to like walk as opposed to skateboarding i mean like i'm no longer stuck or like confined in my own neighborhood yeah i mean now i know bus systems and like how to get from one place to another without any big difficulty to it yeah, you know yeah, and yeah. a lot of people have um a lot of difficulty just getting out of their house to do something you know yeah. so it's just another method definitely yeah. another method yeah yeah so you know Younger, so you're basically recommending that younger adults should oh, like, yeah. maybe get, get maybe into go Go outside, feel the weather, hurt yourself once in a while, like skateboarding and get back up and then do it again. That's all I have yeah. to say. Yeah. I mean, that's what forever is what skateboarding has been about. Absolutely. Do you have anybody like in particular that are looking at you significantly, you know, about your boards, are really interested, who maybe even want to promote your brand in a way where you're on, you may be on another platform? Um... I mean, not particularly. I use like my artwork through skateboards to kind of give back to people who I I love and like people who inspire me. So ah. like, give them as like gifts or like um, I I've recently hopped onto the music circuit. Yeah. And uh, I've been given opportunities to provide boards for you know some of our you know pop culture icons that you would really? refer to these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm um, making boards for like Migos and like Uzi and like Really? Yeah, whenever uh, some big name artists come through the city, I just come through and try to like give give um, a gift of my Wow. Own. Um and that's, you know, something that's free and something that's memorable. So you just skate on to where they, wherever they are. You don't yeah, have yeah. you got a VIP pass or something? Like? I well, it's just like from doing street art in the city, you just yeah. network and you find connections and everybody Oh, everybody wants to support the art, you know, yeah. and it's just having like something or someone to like kind of latch on to get into that, Got you. Um, the mode of it. You know? Oh, man. So it's not just skateboarding or designing or art. It's also networking as well, too. Yeah. Yeah. It's all um, in order to really survive out and be an artist these days. You have to be a renaissance person. Got you. Um, has to do everything with like your business, how you promote yourself. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, and that's like one of the things that I feel uh, needs to be stressed um, if you want to become a practicing artist. Got you. Especially in this city. Yeah, you know? man. Interesting, man. So let's take our last break for this episode. And when Baltimore Pioneers return, Reed and I will discuss how art impacts the Baltimore community. We'll be right back.
Everyone has a role to play when it comes to making sure each student is in school every day. By working together, the entire school community can create a school climate that makes school a place where students want to be and a place where teaching and learning can thrive. Schools where students and families feel welcomed, supported, and respected reinforce a culture of high attendance expectations and are exciting places to be. So do your part in making sure that all of our students are in school every day, ready to learn. Work is underway on modernizing school buildings, like here at Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. The type of school buildings we deserve. Our new schools will provide community-friendly spaces and be better for our environment. They will allow for innovative technology and 21st century teaching and learning. The 21st Century School Buildings Program is positively affecting my education and my city. That's right. Learn more about this major commitment from the state, city of Baltimore, and city schools by visiting baltimore21stcenturyschools.org. Building a brighter future together. Welcome back to Baltimore Pioneers, recording at the beautifully restored Parkway Theater in the Station North Arts District in Baltimore. I'm Xavier Plater, here with Reed B. Moore, a local community street artist who specializes in wire sculptures and skateboarding design. So, Reed, um, can you talk to me a little bit more about um, museum art versus street art? Um, tell me how they differentiate from each other. The distinction between gallery work and street art is like, it starts with a public and it ends with a public. And there's no walls for that, yeah. you know? Um, and even and when you put your work in an enclosed environment, it speaks volumes on like what that artwork means yeah, and yeah. like says. Mm. And just having it out for everybody to kind of see and just have that vulnerability about it uh, really speaks like on another level about, um, I, I guess, the message mm -hmm. for the environment yeah. in the art. Yeah. as opposed to just kind of making a piece that belongs into a gallery space that mm -hmm. only a certain number of individuals are going to view. Right. So that being in mind, like, there is a huge distinction because uh, your, your audience, mm -hmm. you know, and who's going to view it is, is always going to be different, you know? And I feel like by putting it in the streets a little bit more homogenous and diverse to who actually uh, gets to appreciate the artwork as it is, you know? So, right. so what huge effect do you think art has on the crime rate in Baltimore? Um, there's, that, that is another difficult conversation to have. Um, I mean, again, like you express on the street, but you can't really say like how much an artwork could really affect, you know, uh, let's say like the murder rate in Baltimore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Baltimore being like one of the biggest, um, murder, uh, rates per capita, you yeah, know, in the city. In the city. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, even in, what is it, like? U.S. like magazine saying it was like the most dangerous city. Yeah, that was city. What, about, what yesterday. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 something yeah. stupid like that. And, yeah. and it's just, um, I I could say that I'm doing my best, but uh, it, what it really lies in is just uh, community participation. Mm -hmm. Is I feel like what really affects that. Yeah. So the crime rate in Baltimore, um, as much as you might see correlation with art, uh, there could be ulterior things besides art you could do to help that. Yeah. In situation, it's all about just getting outside of your comfort zone and just helping out. You know. Yeah. So. So, um, so when it comes to you hanging up your your sculptures, you know, of course, in the background, you may be, you you may hear, I don't know, whatever the atmosphere of Baltimore is, right? Um, how do you feel? Like, what goes on in your brain when it comes to the Baltimore atmosphere? Um, it's hope, a lot of sadness at times, you know, but uh, that's just me being real about it. There's a lot of things, again, like I said, that uh, we could do to help other people's situations. And I'm in a very privileged right uh, right now to provide, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I made it here as an artist, uh, and there's a lot of people in the city who aren't as fortunate as me to kind of have the platform to express this. Um, so I mean, that, I mean, that's just the way that it's gonna so, go. Out of every other city in America, why Baltimore? It's my city. Uh, I love this city. You know, I love my neighbors and I love like, you know, uh, my block and where I've been. Um, and I mean, I'm not planning on leaving like anytime soon. It's one of those things where I, I am going to stay in the city and yeah, I could visit other places, but you know, Baltimore's my home. It is my home. 
Cool. So, so what do you hope to achieve now in Baltimore? Like, what is your vision? Well, I mean, I'm, my vision is just like, to not get sick of doing anything. You yeah. know, just keep myself, again, like this whole, the whole time I'm here, I'm just talking about motivation, but that's really like what it is, is just to try to keep the motivation and the momentum and inertia going forward. Mm -hmm. Like even after this, you know, it's like uh, you, you, you do these interviews and you're hoping for like a certain platform that you're gonna try to achieve, like mm -hmm. a certain expectation. And like, it's these expectations that always drive our artwork. And it's always these expectations that like, we try to figure out like the wholesome part of like where we're gonna go and what's gonna complete us. But it's always just like the journey of even getting there. And I know it's cliche saying that, but you know, after like being really sad over, we just got over winter. So it being sad like yeah. over a certain point of time and like mm -hmm. leading up to doing something, you expect something to come out of it. But you know, it's, it's just like the fact that you got up and you, you created in the first place right which is the biggest thing so starting now and forwarding looking like at my art mm -hmm. i just want like a year from now um my art to really progress uh in in message and consciousness yeah. for people to look at it and almost be synonymous with like how balmore is you know the the future is going to be hopeful you yeah, know yeah, yeah, and yeah. that people aren't going to like take crap and just go out there and mm -hmm. make their art in their own which yeah, is what yeah. Street art is, it's taking the power back for yourself and just doing it because, yeah. you know, you have to so You, you, you definitely do it. seem like you came a, a long way. You've met a lot of artists. You've made, you know, you've got your own skateboarding company. You've even got designs, sculpture, sculpture designs. So where else do you plan on, you know, achieving when it comes to all of this? See, I, I mean, I made like a five-year plan. Mm -hmm. I'm planning on hitting like at least the entire East Coast and trying to like put a sculpture in most major cities, you know? Really? Um, just because like Baltimore is like a, a very in between, a lot of the people who do art either travel like, you know, like Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I'm and I'm talking also musical. It's weird because like the, the cross between music and like art is very parallel. And you know, you go to like Atlanta and people don't want to go to Baltimore because they have Philadelphia or they have like New York, mm -hmm. and it's like all these places that are these um, cultural like hearths that I feel like Baltimore could really just like, sun, uh, like hunker down and grasp some of that. And which is what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to like be a part of um, something amazing that's happening right now. So where can we find these amazing, the rest of your amazing pieces that you may have? Any recent art pieces around the city? Well, I mean, I always try to hit like all the exits going to like the highways in and out of the city. I feel like one of the biggest ones I've done is I hit my own neighborhood and um, like over towards like Remington, like Charles Village. I recently just installed like a few pieces or like a piece over in Hamden as kind mm. of, you know, as a viewing thing. Um, normally I don't really try to hit those big areas where there's gonna be a lot of people just because, I mean, it takes a lot to make the sculptures that I do. And whenever I do have the time to do it, I wanna make sure that it's getting to the communities that will actually view the art and love the art as yeah. instead of it just turning into like another side gimmick. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. So just trying to find like, a demographic which my art will affect the most is like really important when I place my sculptures. So, hey, hey man, your art is affecting a lot of people. It affect me as well. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, and I just hope that you just keep doing what you're doing, man. This brings us to the end of Baltimore Pioneers. Sadly, oh. um, we would love to have you stay a little longer. But um, we thank you so much for coming out here, man, and sharing everything about your sculptures, thank your you. design, and your passion for Baltimore, man. Appreciate Thanks it. again. Man, X. Uh, Always a pleasure, okay. bro. And I would like to thank you for watching Baltimore Pioneers, a program where we talk with thinkers and doers in Baltimore. This show is produced by the City School Student Media Team and is brought to you by the Proximity Project and Education Channel 77 of Baltimore City Public Schools. So this has been Baltimore Pioneers. I'm Xavier Plater. See you next time.